welcome to the squirrel tail. On this video, I'm going to show you how to put a install a touch hole liner. Now, compared to a standard touch hole in a flint lock, um, if you put a stainless steel liner, it rapidly improves ignition time and also durability of the um ignition time so in this case i have a chambers six inch or a chambers um white lightning touch hole liner that i'm going to show you how to put in this rifle today um so the advantage of this is its cone shape which Instead of having a long little hole that the flame has to travel through, it only has a, it only has to travel a little bit, which makes for a lot better ignition. So to install this, you need the liner, of course. You need the appropriate size tap. In this case, this is quarter thirty-two, which is not a standard size, but it is something a tap that you can get. Um, so it's quarter 32 national extra fine, or yeah, quarter 32, um, you need the tap and a set of tap handles. You can do it with a wrench, but I would not recommend it. You're going to need straight edge, Sharpie, um, you will need a scribe, which I have this really nice scribe here, um, a center punch, the appropriate size drill bits, a pilot, and then the appropriate tap drill, um, and you'll need your lock and obviously your gun. I'm doing this on a pistol. The instructions for a rifle would be the same. And then a spring vise and a screwdriver. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the frizzing spring out. So to do that, or I'm going to take not the frizzing spring, I'm going to take the frizzing off. So to do that, I'm going to take the spring vise, and you can do this with just a standard vise. See my lock dismantling video. And just basically get the tension off the frizzin. And carefully remove the frizzin. Be careful not to lose the screws, because then you have to order replacements. Probably should be doing this over a table. Not over my dirty shop floor. So you remove the frizzin. And put this lock, the screw, in the frizzin in a place that you won't lose them. Preferably one of those magnetic trays, which I will actually... It's off screen, but... I will put it in that magnetic tray so it doesn't get lost. And then I'm going to come around, I'm going to take the vise off. That's obviously not a great start, but. And then I'm going to bring my lock on. And then also carefully just tap it up against. And then I'm going to scribe. Basically, this provides clearance for a straight edge. And I already did this, but get a close-up view of it. You want to cover where you put the lock in Sharpie or Dykem. 
I'm going to bring my straight edge in and put up against the top of the pan. Now I'm going to grab a line straight across there. And that marks the top of the pan. That is where you want you want your hole to be on the top of your pan for quick ignition. And then I'm going to take my scribe and I'm going to scribe the edges of the pan very carefully. And I'm going to carefully remove the lock. Now the, and now you could honestly eyeball center and probably be good, but because I'm a machinist, I'm going to take my calibers, I'm going to measure between those two lines, and that is 320, so that would be 160 would be center, because half of 320 is 160. And I'm going to make a mark there. And at this point, I'm going to take the barrel out of the vise. Or I'm going to take the gun out of the vise and take the barrel out of the gun. That way I don't damage my stock. And then I'm going to bring... Get the barrel. These wind jaws aren't the greatest, but they work. In. And I have that mark there. And I am going to... Take a center punch... And my brass hammer, or well, any hammer, to be honest. And I'm going to put a center punch mark. And actually, it's probably better if I bring this around this little bench block um and get a good solid center punch mark and now what I would recommend doing is putting the barrel back in the stock And putting the lock back in, and it's hard to see with the lighting. Make sure that that center punch mark is where you want it. And that looks pretty good. So I will take the barrel back out. And now I'm ready to come over the drill press and drill it. So I have my drill press. Now I normally do this step in my bridge port, but I don't, most people probably don't have bridge ports. And if you have a bridge port, I don't think, I would hope you know how to do this. Um, this is more, this video is more intended for the guy who's never done it and has very little machining experience. So I'm gonna come in with this vise. Tighten it up good. Obviously, this would be a little bit more challenging if you have a longer barrel. But be it would be about the same. And if you have a swamp barrel, you might want to put a piece of wood in there. On um, that, because it's not parallel. And now, I want to do... 
um, a pilot drill and then the main drill. Now, I'm using my modern technology here. Um, well, it's always good to double check your drill size. So, 2118. So it says right here on this chart, 732nd. So I have a 732nd drill. And then I have a pilot drill, which is a good bit smaller. That's 116. So, or wait. Yeah, 160 drill. So I'm like 50 some thousand smaller, which is good. So I'm going to bring, put my pilot in, get it good and tight. So I want to check my speeds. I want to make sure I'm on the slowest speed for this. And bring down my drill. And find that center punch mark. And then give it a drop of oil to keep your drill bit cool. This is a little bit awkward with the camera. Slowly drill that out. Bring it up occasionally to give it some more oil. And then once you break through, you have that that one in. And then I mean I come bring in my main drill now i don't want the whole oversize because i want good tight threads so that's why i'm doing the pilot because it'll drill it closer to size um you know that way it's good good solid tight threads because i mean these are holding a lot of pressure back so you want you don't want sloppy threads so I'm gonna bring that in so you draw out your main hole the next thing you want to do is you want to countersink that hole um, So you take your countersink and you just want to, just want to touch it. And really what you should do is if you have your calibers, if you're building guns, I think your first tool should be a set of dial calibers. And that's 300, so I want... That's 300,000, so I want my countersink to make the outside of that hole 300. I'll have to bring my table up a hair. And you want to make sure you use the right angle countersink. I believe that that's a 45. So that looks pretty good. Maybe just a touch deeper. So after you do that, you take your barrel out of the vise, out of that vise, come back over here.
put it in your bench vise. And then you take your tap and again put always use good amounts of oil when tapping. Bring that around and Gear started. It's relatively fine thread, so it should be pretty easy. Go back and forth, make sure everything looks good and straight. And you get your threads in. Now you want to blow them out real good. And I would recommend tapping your barrel a little bit. Blowing any threads out or any chips out. And then you want to take it. You want to carefully thread that in. And feel it, that's a pretty good thread engagement. And then take some sort of wrench like this. Nice and tight. Vice grips might even be a good thing for this task. Then the next thing to do, now that you have that in there nice and tight, is to take a hacksaw and in this touch hole, there's a little groove cut into it. You just kind of want to come in. And cut along that groove. And then take a mill file. Smooth it out. Maybe even draw file it a little bit. And your touch hole liner is installed. Now, obviously, I still have to draw a file and sand the rest of the barrel, so that will make that look nicer. And now you can put your lock in, or put your barrel back in your stock. And you can check your work. As you can see, I now have a touch hole right at the top of my pan right where I want it now you might depending on like if you're planning on using only 2f or something you might want to drill that hole out a little bit that's not a big deal I think I'm going to try it with just the standard size and see how it works if I need to drill it out later you can always come back and do that so I hope you enjoyed the video make sure you like and subscribe and have a good day